To me, it's all about control. If you're really thinking, when you're investing shares, gold, or the financial forex market, things like that, uh, I have so many friends who invested in that, and they wake up next morning wondering where is their money, is it still there or not? And to me, as well as the, the, those type of markets, your wealth can just disappear overnight, totally as it has done in many cases in the recent years, once the recession got here. If you invested badly, or even reasonably, you can still lose your money. It's all about leverage. Banks support le uh, the leverage of your properties. Uh, if you buy shares or gold, my understanding is that uh, you have to pay 100% for it, and you certainly can't uh, exactly borrow on it to buy more gold. It's too risky in terms of the market. But when it comes to property, there's value in investing in it because unless you bought uh, in a ridiculous area like um, somewhere a motorway is going to go through, because these days you don't have to worry about that. Just go to the council, you know there's a motorway going through it, then so be it. Uh, just stay away from it. There's lots of good average areas to buy in, and values never really, really drop. They do recover at the end as well, and it's a known thing. We have our property clock style cycle. Properties in Auckland have doubled every ten to sorry every eight to ten years since the war that I've known, and through that, it's good to know that whatever property values are today, in the next eight to ten years, it will be double its values. It's as simple as that. Uh, if you buy closer into the epicenter of mm. Auckland, where, which is the area I like to invest in, as I'll explain later, um, the value is actually more than uh, double every eight to ten years. They actually go a little bit higher because they're as, they, as they're closer to the epicenter, they're more closer to the average uh, centre than than others. So, properties. My understanding is. If you don't want to wait the every eight to ten years for double, then you leverage it out. Like for instance, I like putting in uh, as low as ten to twenty percent into a property, wait for the property value to increase by ten to twenty percent, recycle my equity out, and then have two properties. And then as uh, property rises again every ten ten percent or to twenty percent, I recycle equity out and then buy another property. And that's the way you do it. So you can compound your properties and more than double it within every eight to ten years uh, just understanding the property clock and property cycle um, investing. Well I'm born and bred in New Zealand, third generation. I feel that Auckland's a big city, it's the largest city in New Zealand. Uh, majority of the population is in Auckland. There is a pretty much one and a half million citizens in New Zealand. That is one third of the population in Auckland itself. So supply and demand will always be here. This supply and demand is also compounded by the fact that uh, migrants that come to New Zealand, the majority come to Auckland anyway. So there's always a high demand of rentals. And it's rental properties that I'm investing in, so why not be in the area where all the renters are wanting to come to first? There's a good turnover of them. If someone moves out, there's always another one that comes in. And Auckland in itself, right at this moment, is not keeping up with the accommodation market. Uh, we're falling behind with the accommodation needs. We're not building fast enough. We need something like about 26,000 new accommodation every year, and that's certainly not happening. Um, the signs of that is generally it's pre-boom right now. We should be seeing cranes around Auckland, but there's nothing like it that, that we had uh, 10 years ago. So I see a growing major problem, and, I could, and uh, to me, I'm be forecasting that given two or three years now, unless there's a lot of developers popping up, Auckland is going to have a major uh, accommodation issue. 
even if there are builders around, there's a huge shortage in Christchurch. And Christchurch, I see, is a 10-year plan to reconstruct. So there's going to be certainly a shortage of builders around uh, New Zealand for quite some time. And so why not invest in Auckland where there's a shortage of accommodation, shortage of uh, builders to build, and there's a continuing growth of um, people coming into the to Auckland. <laughs>
there for auction. Uh, but only, on the other hand, don't just go to the normal auctions. Look for mortgagee sale auctions. They'll tell you the other side of the coin as to how cheap you can get properties. Quite often you can find bargains at these places. But however, the danger of auctions is that you're buying cash as is, where is, and you may buy yourself uh, a more major problem than you realise. So it's good to go and consider getting builder's report when you do your due diligence on these sort of properties. Right. So the main thing when you're buying a property is check out that the your due diligence is to check out that the property is in good order. Limb reports will tell you whether it has codes of compliance or everything. Uh, the banks will certainly uh, support you there. So I like to have subject to finance in my conditions. Uh, if the bank finds out that uh, where we can't, that there's something wrong with the property, sure, you can always get an out clause on the finance conditions. Uh, builder's report is very important if you're not aware of things. Especially out there in Auckland today, uh, there's a lot of uh, leaky homes out there. For me, I just stay away with them full stop. Uh, that's anything built after 1992. Just stay away from them because even if it has been fixed up and, and everything's okay, it still has a stigma to it and that stigma will always uh, reduce the value. Right? It's only until every house in the country is certified as being okay will that day come. It's too far away for us investors. <laughs> Uh, previously I self-managed, but in, in, in the long run I found that time was very important to me. Time to do my job, time to look for other properties for investing, just time to uh, have, have freedom from my investments. So although it may save you a few cents or a few dollars in terms of property management, I do highly recommend to get yourself a property manager. Because there's lots of property managers, get yourself a very good property manager. Now for me, previously with my 30 odd properties, um, I would constantly have at least one of those properties forever empty. Right? There's always a property that was empty. And further to that, I was never really, because I was too busy chasing around uh, all the properties, I never really maximised my rents. I was too busy with other issues and of course 30 properties is a lot to manage when you really think about it. Uh, it may not seem much but um, half an hour here, half an hour there, time to travel to and from, uh, setting aside a whole night to go and see someone, uh, mucking around with tenants. It might be that you may only see one tenant one weekend but that's your weekend gone. Time to me is more valuable than that and I like to enjoy my um, time in some terms of value. After what are we investing for? We're investing so that we can enjoy what we have, not work on what we have, or work in what we have. So I, I like to get myself a property manager. When I did that I found that, hello, my vacancy rate had almost dropped uh, quite considerably. So where I had constantly a vacancy every week for a whole year in, year out, sometimes two vacancies, um, during this time. My loss of rent right now is probably down to about one or two months a year out of the whole lot. Not a lot and that to me is good value when I offset that against to the amount of um, property management fees I pay. So who do we get as a good property manager? Um, probably you can ask your local Auckland Property Investor Association uh, come along to the the evenings, they do talk about rental managements quite often, they talk about uh, uh, rent increases, that sort of thing. But social work, network with your uh, RPO and um, then you'll find that uh, you'll be more in tune. But to me, my big advice is get yourself a property manager. I've been through it, I've done it, time is more valuable to me, uh, don't want it to affect my income from my other sources, so property manager is the way to go. Simple thing is, it's nothing to do with dollars and cents. It's all to do with learning and the knowledge that I gain from it. And, and the sharing of my own as well is, is even more gratifying to me so that uh, I could learn. Property investing is about learning. It's just like if you want to become um, 
property investor, you want to buy a dozen properties. Well, look, this isn't a this is this isn't, is a, a, isn't a fast get rich scheme. It's a long term plan. Property investing is a ten year, and for me, being a member of the Property Investor Association helped me keep up with trends, sharing knowledge. Uh, there's always things changing out there. Interest rates, for instance, they're changing every virtually every week, every month, every every year. Uh, different from year to year. Uh, there's new laws that come out all the time. Uh, changes in the um, Tenancy Act. Very important for us investors to know what's going on. Uh, the mortgage market, the real estate market. These are all changing. This is my strongest, most valuable benefit that I got from the association. It's not about just joining and got a local magazine. It's not about the huge discounts that have paid for the the uh, magazines and the membership itself. Because I do, do a lot of renovations. I probably get several thousand dollars in benefit back in terms of discounts. But that's not the real value. Uh, it, the value is in the in the um, the sharing and the networking in itself.